गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स एम आई ऑडिबल टू यू येस आर नो Yeah, today I'll start with our uh, a small review on your transistors. Is it visible to you, everyone? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. So let me start our. basic uh, transistor operation but after i'll move to the configurations so today agenda is to complete our all the three configurations yeah you have given a question when do you have your mits actually we plan to conduct it from uh, october 1st onwards but um, so that is decided like that uh, october 1st onwards we're going to conduct your um, i mean to say unit test not the mits Mid season November, I think. Already you have your uh, academic calendar, I think so. So a new academic uh, revised uh, academic calendar in joint day side you have. So just go through that. Yeah, and in November uh, we have the mids and uh, unit one test about the first unit is conducted from October first. Ah yes. So my day conduct. first year second semester exams in october uh, second week onwards so the dates they are not given a notification came okay let me discuss with our coordinators or our hods then we will let me know that information about uh, your exams or your classes will it uh, continue for the next week or uh, on the october 1st weeks will we conduct the assignment test or not that we will ask our hods and the coordinator then let let first we know that then after uh, thereafter i'll inform you people okay actually fourth year uh, second semester exams are over and from 26 onwards uh, they are conducting the unit uh, mid to two exam also uh, that's what that's what i am saying so let me first discuss this with our hods and coordinators so then uh, thereafter if you have any information about that then we'll inform to you okay now let me start our class okay only one unit first unit we have completed no so in that unit you have and that too it is not uh, a test actually one to one interaction we have will form you as one group uh, with the uh, five members then we'll ask you a questions i'd like viva so you have to answer yes all subjects only one unit first unit first unit for unit test and for a mid exam you have to write the exam in two and a half units okay now let us start our class okay right okay now this is a basic uh, transistor structure 
with the forward biased input junction and reverse biased output junction. So as we already know that our input junction is base to emitter and output junction is base to collector. Now just look it over here, everybody, the images which we have given with the NPN transistor and PNP transistors. PNP, just over, overview I'll give you from last session. Right. So in order to apply the forward bias of a base to emitter junction, so this is the NPN transistor. So base is B type material. Hence, I have to apply the positive terminal here and the negative terminal must be connected to the emitter. So, where the, it is a common emitter configuration, hence we have provided the third terminal of your transistor to the ground. Okay, next, base to collector junction must be reverse bias. So, collector is of in NPN transistor is N type. So, in order to apply a reverse bias, so we have to apply the positive terminal of your voltage uh, the applied voltage uh, sources uh, positive terminal is connected to the collector terminal as as we already connected here a base um, base with a positive and a collector with a positive terminal now we have the input junction is forward bias base to emitter junction is forward bias and base to collector junction is reverse bias next next image will show the pnp transistor it's a pnp transistor hence the basis of n type so in order to apply the forward bias to the base to emitter junction, you have to apply the negative terminal to the base and positive terminal to the ground. Where base to collector is connected with uh, collector is of uh, P type. Hence we have to provide, we have to provide, uh, here we have a negative terminal which is connected to the P type collector terminal and positive terminal of supply voltage is connected to the ground. So like this, we have to connect the forward bias voltage on input junction and reverse bias voltage on your output junction. Next, next slide. This is the basic structure. And now let I explain you the operation of the transistor. Now I took your NPN transistor. So it's a common emitter configuration. So we apply the proper biasing. Now, if I apply the proper biasing after the cutting voltage at uh, applied base to emitter junction, so your carriers, which are your majority carriers or electrons in n-type emitter that are traveled or diffused towards the base. As the depletion layer width is decreased or it is nullified due to the applied or increase in the base to emitter junction voltage, the depletion layer width at the base to emitter junction is nullified. Hence, there is a free space for diffuse into the other region of base. Now, in the base, which is a P-type material, so we have a holes. So, let those electrons which are diffused from emitter to base are recombined with your recombined with your uh, holes. So, when it is recombined with the holes, there is a amount of current flow which is denoted as base current IB and so only the base is a lightly doped one so a few amount of majority charge, charge carriers which are holes are present out of the number of uh, carriers from emitter which are diffused 100% if I treat it as 100% only 5% of electrons will recombine with the holes of base and left of 95% of electrons will diffuse into the collector region because so now here the electrons in your base to emitter junction is plays a role of minority charge carriers and we applied the base to collector voltage is a reverse bias we applied a reverse bias voltage hence the depletion layer width will increase towards your base so obviously here when I apply a base to emitter junction or when I apply a more collector to base voltage, which is a reverse bias voltage, the depletion layer width will increase, which can reduce the base width. When the base width is reduced, so the available carriers on that effective base width will also reduce. Hence, IB is, IB is very, very small, whereas these all the carriers which are traveled collector 
terminal like this the current is constituted from the conductor terminal which is denoted as a ic so this is your basic operation of a npn transistor once you are base to emitter uh, junction forward bias there is a heavy amount of charge carriers and those diffuse into the base then it recombines with your holes and constitute a current ib thereafter applied reverse bias on collector to base junction can can increase the base width uh, sorry can increase the depletion layer width which can reduce the effective base width so when effective the base width reduce the carriers the majority carriers in the base is reduced when it is reduced so amount of ib is also very less and remaining all the electrons which can diffuse into the collector where we can collect here all the majority carriers from the collector terminal like this is the current so ib is amount of amount of emitter current which is equal to summation of base and collector current so as we have uh, discussed that only 5% of electrons can recombine that can constitute the current which is very very small and it is in the range of microamps whereas ic is in the range of milliamps so if we neglect the base current then ie or ie is approximately equal to ic so if we neglect your ib current then ie is approximately equal to ic now this is the operation of your transistor which is in pnp configuration now if it is in pnp configuration so in order to apply the forward bias we are applying your positive terminal of a ve to the v type emitter and negative terminal to the n type material whereas here output junction must be reverse bias so output junction is reverse bias so after applying p type p type to the negative terminal of vcc at its supply voltage on output junction and positive terminal is applied to the base so which i have taken as a common base configuration so here i took your base as a common Uh, now the basic operation is here base to emitter junction if i increase after a certain cut in voltage of at your base to emitter junction amount of carriers here majority carriers in pnp transistor is holes so these holes can diffuse into the base and recombine with the electrons which are this is because base is a lightly doped and n type so majority carriers are here only n type and uh, output junction is reverse bias hence here depletion layer width will increase or more than this this point is very very important so if you have if you are uh, junction if your junction is reverse bias so for the amount of voltage where you are applying it as a reverse voltage to that pn junction diode so this can cause the depletion layer width to increase and that depletion layer width is more penetrated into the lightly doped region now out of the collector and base our base is a lightly doped one hence so your depletion layer width or depletion layer will more penetrated into the base region not into the collector region as we wanted to dissipate more number of charge carriers in the collector hence the area of the collector is more collector region is more and the depletion layer width is more penetrated because our output junction is reverse biased so when our output junction is reverse biased so the depletion layer width is more penetrated into the lightly doped region so out of the three regions our base is a lightly doped region hence so we have the more penetration into the base region which can reduce the physical width of base actually the physical width will be constant but after applying your or varying your collector voltages so that uh, width of the uh, 
property of the uh, the width of the base will be reduced. So charge carriers in those effective width will reduce. So in that effective width, the charge carriers will be very less. So due to that, IB is reduced. When IB is reduced, so I C is increased because amount of emitter current is taking out from your collector terminal. Hence, if IB is reduced, so IC is increased. So like this, so this is your overview. And these are the charge, I mean, the current components in your PNP fan system. So majority carriers, so which are I, IE is the emitter current. IC is the corrector current, IB is the base current. Now, majority carriers in P-type emitter, PNP type, if it is a PNP transistor, it is majority carriers are holes. And in base, the majority carriers are electrons. In collector, the majority carriers are because it is a P-type. So, majority carriers are, majority carriers are holes. Now, here, these are the current directions in your uh, PNP transistor. As the higher potential is at here, plus or a positive terminal here, so always the amount of current flow is from high potential, higher potential to the lower potential. So hence here, the amount of uh, the current direction is towards into your emitter terminal. The arrow is inside into your emitter terminal. So plus to minus. Whereas here your basis of N type, hence it will and here collector is of P type and the applied old, uh, voltages here plus and minus. So amount of IC which will come out from this collector terminal is in this direction because plus to minus. So hence this is in the direction. This is in the your uh, direction out outward to the collector terminal. Like this. So if I apply the KCL IE equal to IB plus IC, total amount of emitted current is equal to summation of your base and collector current. So where IB is in the range of micro amperes and IC is in the range, IC and IE are in the range of milli amps so now if i am applying the kcl i total amount of emitter current is equal to ic plus ib and ic the collector current actually it is equal to the summation of majority carrier current as well as the minority charge carrier because our output junction is reversed by a small amount of current is flowing when our when the base to emitter junction is open circuited or the your emitter or a uh, which we are connected the common ground terminal if it is open circuited then a small amount of duty your output junction we have and we have applied a reverse bias so since that so we have a small amount of reverse saturation current which is denoted with the ic naught ic naught is the reverse saturation current or it is a leakage current due to the emitter terminal open if it is a common emitter configuration if it is a common base configuration base terminal open then it is called as icbo like this so your total amount of if i neglect this reverse saturation current so then ic is equal to only it is equal to the collector current due to only the majority carriers in the collector region next we will move to the what is trans what is the parameters in your transistor and how to define the current gain so always the gain is output by input so output to input so now your current gain must be equal to output current to the input current so in a common emitter configuration your current gain is denoted as beta dc and that is equal to Output current in a common emitter is IC and input current in a common emitter is IB. Hence, it is equal to beta DC. So, it is a ratio of output current to input current where in common, common emitter configuration, collector current is IC and base current is here IB. 
so beta dc in the is in the range of 20 to 400 why it is 20 to 400 is ib is in the range of microamps where ic is in the range of milliamps so hence we have a high amount of current gain in a common emitter configuration next so this is your alpha dc where this alpha dc is in common base configuration in common base configuration the output current is collector current and our input current is emitter current so it's a ratio of output current to input current so ic divided by i as ic so emitted current so the current which is transferred through the emitter region are collected at the collector region so if i neglect the base current then ic is approximately equal to i hence so if i have this equation ic by i then our range of the alpha dc must be in the in between the 0 0.95 to almost approximately equal to 1 so 0 0.99 as ic is less than ie hence our alpha dc is equal to point Second, 0.95 to 0.99. So, this is your alpha DC in common base configuration. So, current gain in common base is denoted with alpha, current gain in common emitter is denoted with beta. Next, I'll move to my next slide. In this next slide, just here, sorry, here. It is the configuration. Which type of configuration it is? It's a common emitter configuration. And now I wanted to give now the notation which I'm going to utilize for the DC base current is IB, DC emitter current is I, IE, DC collector current is IC because we applied, it doesn't apply any AC signal here. We applied only DC voltages at both junctions, uh, input junction and output junction. So notation, so hence uh, the DC current is flowing through that transistor, which is denoted as IB. If it is a base current and emitter current is IE, collector current IC. And the voltage between base with respect to the emitter is denoted with VBE. The DC voltage between collector to emitter is represented with VCE and collector to base is represented with VCB. Now, I am going to give a short quiz, draw the locations and directions of your IB, IE, VB, VCB and VC. Can you do that? This is a circuit, the same circuit which I am taking, NPN transistor. Now I have given the notations which are utilized for base current, collector current, emitter current, base to emitter voltage, collector to base voltage collector to emitter voltage. Now I am giving a short quiz. So just draw the directions and locations of these currents and voltages. Have you done that? Yes. Only one? Okay, check your answer. Now I'll show the next slide with the directions and voltages. Now, so in order to protect our base to emitter junction and collector to base junction, we used a series resistance RB and RC here. Now, IB is flowing towards into the base terminal. Since we applied the base VBB positive terminal here, so higher potential to lower potential, okay? So it is in this direction inside your base terminal. Whereas IC is here, again we applied a 
positive voltage here vcc plus positive terminal of vcc and so it is in this direction towards into your collector current now emitter current which will out outward from your emitter terminal so i have not denoted that so actually it is in this direction so now let us show that this is the emitter current direction now so vcb i ask to represent vcb so vcb is so this is the direction of vcb and this is your base to emitter junction voltage polarities plus here and here minus next vce already denoted here okay right right next i'll move to the next slide so base to emitter junction after the cutting voltage it will uh, it will be at uh, 0.7 voltage 0.7 volts so vb is always it is in saturation it will be 0.7 volts so next here up we when we apply the cable here amount of so here if i apply the crich of voltage law so vbb minus of ibrb minus of vb equal to zero so in order to find the ib current or your base current so we have to find the voltage drop across your base resistor rb and by ohms law vrb is equal to ibrb and if i replace that vrb is equal to ibrb so then we can easily find out the base current which is equal to vbb minus of vbe divided by rb like this we'll find your base current ib is it clear everybody is it clear everybody apply the kvl in input loop so if i apply the kvl in input loop the kvl must be equal to vbb minus of vrb voltage drop across your base resistor minus of base to emitter junction voltage drop across your base to emitter junction is equal to zero so now if i replace the voltage across your base resistance with ibrb then from that i can find your base current which is equal to vbb minus so vb as i said in active region vbe base to emitter junction is always it is approximately equal to 0.7 volts for silicon diode and 0.3 for your germanium diode hence here vbb minus of 0.7 divided by rb can give you a base current next i'll move to your next slide so in this one let me find the output current ic so in order to find the output current ic so again we have to apply the kvl in this output loop if i apply the kvl then it is equal to vcc minus of the voltage drop across here collector resistor rc minus of voltage drop between collector to emitter is equal to zero now from this voltage drop across your collector terminal or collector sorry collector resistor is equal to vcc minus vce since the drop across your rc is ic into rc now ic what is ic actually ic is current gain is equal to ic by ib so ic is beta times of ib and here our collector to emitter voltage is equal to vcc minus of ic rc now if i replace with the ib already if we find your ib we can easily calculate your ic value if i know your beta dc otherwise we have to know about the collector to emitter voltages and the magnitude of vcc 
as well as the resistor value like that the question we will, will get it so to finding your base current and collector current in a common emitter configuration next the voltage the dc voltage at the collector with respect to the base is equal to as collector to emitter voltage is the sum of your collector to base plus uh, sum of your and uh, base to emitter voltage now collector to base voltage if i wanted to find it then i have to take vce minus vbe as we know that collector to emitter voltage after applying the kvl between your input and output terminal we have the voltage at base to emitter plus base to collector base to collector now in order to find the voltage at vcb you have to subtract vce minus of vb so this is in the first class i said after applying ie equal to ib plus ic and vce equal to vbe plus vcb vcb with that we can find your collector to base voltage and this is about your adjust overview now next i'll move to the our today's session class so configurations of bjd so as we already i already explained so three types of configurations common collector common base and common emitter so why we why we have to have this three types of configurations is because so for some applications for the real world applications we require the high input resistance not to drive those circuits we require the high input resistance low output resistance voltage gain is maximum actually high voltage gain we require as well as the current gain is also high so to obtain those characteristics so let we take one of the input terminal as common terminal and let we verify their characteristics and in order to obtain those characteristics of these four input resistance is high output resistance low current gain and voltage gains are high which is suitable for to use as an amplifier that we need to find it so as we have three terminals if i am taking one terminal as con one terminal as common terminal then i have three configuration so out of the three config which is suitable that we will learn from this bjt transistor okay now this is a basic idea so a transistor which is having three terminals but in order to obtain a two port network we require four terminals so two terminals are treated as input terminals and two terminals are treated as output terminals like this so let i take this slide so two terminals are treated as input terminals and two terminals are treated as output terminals so let i denote that as one this is two this is three and this is four as we know that the transistor is having only three terminals so to obtain that four ports i mean two uh, two ports or two nodes we require so hence one of the um, terminal must be grounded so a common terminal is used and that must be connected to the ground so based on which terminal you are connecting to the ground is it clear everybody so to analyze our transistor configuration we require four terminals or a two port network one port for input and one port for output here we have 1 2 3 4 and here i am applying the input and i'll collect it that to 4 i'll collect here output okay but at a transistor is having three terminals hence one must one of the out of the three one must be connected to the common so with that we have three configurations common emitter common base and common 
collect. Is it clear, everybody? Is it clear? Right. Now, these are the three configurations available. Now, let I move to here. Common base configuration. Now, so this is a circuit to obtain the common base configuration. Observe carefully. Here, we have a transistor symbol, electronic symbol. So, which type of transistor it is? Anyone can answer? Which type of transistor it is? I am asking which type of transistor? Yes, NPN, NPN. Good. Right. So, an NPN transistor I took and I connected the base as a common terminal which is connected to the ground. Okay. Right. Emitter is the input terminal. Collector is the output terminal. Is it clear everybody? Right. So, in order to obtain the emitter current, so we have connected a ammeter. To obtain the collector current, so we have connected a ammeter. So, emitter current is in the range of milli amps. So, milli ammeter is connected. Collector current is also in the range of milli amps. So, a milli ammeter is connected here. Next, to obtain the base to emitter voltage, so, it is a common base. So, we have represented that voltage between emitter to base as VEB. So, to obtain the voltage, we have connected a voltmeter which is in chat with your emitter to base. And here also at the output junction. So, in order to obtain the output voltages from collector to base, we also connected one more voltmeter at collector to base. So, like this, these are the polarities which I have connected. So, to obtain here a proper readings on the voltmeter and ammeters. Now, this is a N NPN transistor. So, now base to emitter junction must be forward bias. Collector to base junction must be reverse bias. Hence, we applied a collector is of N type. We applied a positive terminal a negative terminal of VCC is connected to the ground. Whereas at the input side, to obtain your forward bias, base is of P type. Hence, we connected from the VEE source, the positive terminal is connected to the base and negative terminal is connected to the emitter. And this is a port. We have a resistor here, a series resistor. So, if I adjust here, adjust it uh, an adjustable resistor or a port we have connected. So, if I, uh, if I move that shaft, then I have the different amount of currents that can enter or different amount of uh, uh, currents can transfer through your emitter terminal as well as uh, here also at your collector terminal, amount of voltage is different. Your VE and VCC are fixed. So, VE and VCC are a DC voltages, but in order to obtain the different voltages from 0 to your the maximum amount of voltage we, what you can apply 30 volts for example so we have connected a one resistor here so with the shaft over there here when i shift this shaft towards the maximum resistance to minimum resistance i can obtain so maximum uh, maximum uh, minimum to maximum voltages so, so 0 to 30 volts of variable voltages i can get it from this shaft so, here also the same at the output junction. I have connected a potentiometer or a rheostat. We can also connect it. So, with, with that connection, if I shift your shaft position, can yield your amount of voltage which can apply at your collector to base junction. Now, so now we have to verify will this common base amplifier, a common base configuration, is suitable for the ideal amplification characteristics or not? 
So now let me first uh, learn about. So in order to obtain the input resistance calculation, output resistance calculation, voltage gain calculation, as well as your current gain calculation, let me first take the input characteristic analysis and output characteristic analysis. So now we are moving to the input characteristic analysis. Now, how to define a uh, input characteristic? Okay. This characteristic is a curve between the input current and your input voltage. Between the input voltage to the input current. Whereas the output voltage must be kept constant. And to determine the input characteristics in a common base configuration, the input current is a emitter current and your input voltage is a base to emitter voltage. So your output junction voltage is collected to base. It must be kept at zero. Gradually it is increased with the different values with the maximum obtained values. So then we have to verify the amount of IE is increased from, for, uh, sorry, from increasing zero by increasing your VEB. This can be repeated for higher fixed values of VCB. Now a curve is drawn between your emitter current and emitter base voltage at collector to base voltage is kept at zero. Initially we'll keep, we'll keep your collector to base voltage. increase our emitter to base junction voltage and now we'll verify that in our ammeter. So now VC, VC, here VCB is kept to zero. By adjusting this shaft position, our voltage across the base to collector is kept at, initially it is kept at zero. Then we'll vary the VE value. We'll vary the VE value. So VEB or base to emitter junction voltage, we'll vary it. And then we'll obtain, so we'll just observe, will that IE is increasing or not? So input characteristic can give you the curve drawn between your input voltage to the input current if the output voltage is constant. Is it clear everybody? Now, so this is your characteristics. Now on x-axis, we have taken the VAB on y-axis, we have taken the input current IE. IE is in the milliamp stream where VEB is in volts, right? Now, initially we have applied with zero volts and from that zero volts, gradually will increase towards the fixed values of your VCB. So, VCB must be a greater than one or VCB equal to one. We can, we can obtain we can apply we can apply and vcb equal to 20 volts we'll apply vcb equal to 5 volts we'll apply so this is your 5 volts so this is the 20 volts so next vcb you can apply with the 5 volts also gradually we'll increase your output junction voltage and verify we'll verify our input current variation now so this graph will yield the input junction i mean pn junction forward bias characteristic. Your current IE is increasing exponentially or gradually with respect to the emitter to base voltage. So IB is increased for a zero for a zero base base to collector voltage with a base to collector voltage as well as if I am going to increase uh, gradually I have to increase my base to emitter voltage from zero to the maximum so but my junction voltage must be equal to the 0 0.7 0 0.7 volts the base width will in decrease so the curve moves left as vcb increase so as we already know that so vcb zero no amount of uh, reverse bias on the output junction hence the depletion layer width is less hence the emitter current is more. When we apply a collector to base junction with the 
positive voltages then we have here we have uh, base to uh, base to collector voltage then the base width will reduce when the base width will reduce base current is decreasing if base current is decreasing then emitter current increases so emitter current is increasing so the curve is curve will stay in the left side of the vcb with zero holes so this is repeated for the high range of your vcbs next so increasing vcb will increase your emitter current increasing vcb will increase the emitter current is it clear everybody one second the voice is breaking as per nana am i not audible to you everyone do you face any problem yes can i move to your slides yes so now is it clear everybody the concept in common base configuration so input characteristics is the curve or a drawn between your input voltage to the input current in common base configuration input voltage is emitter to base voltage and input current is ie with a emitter no, sorry collector to base junction voltage must be kept constant so initially we'll start with a zero volts thereafter gradually will increase our collector to base junction voltage if we going on increasing your collector to base voltages ie also increases so ie also increases with a vcb So it's simple PN junction diode characteristics in forward bias like that we have in this picture or in this image. So exponentially your current is increasing. Right. Next output characteristics. So in input characteristics, what you can measure? Now I wanted to use this common base as an amplifier. If I wanted to use that, first I have to find what is the input resistance. So to find that input resistance. R I, R I input resistance of common base configuration is equal to. So at any point of your characteristic, you can have a tangent on this. After this, at this point, let I draw a vertical line on x-axis as well as on y-axis. Now we have some random values on. vgb as well as on the ie now input resistance of common base configuration is the ratio of vgb to ie like this you can find your input resistance in a common base configuration now ie is in the range of milliamps so our resistance is in the range of kilo ohms is in the range of kilo ohms right so hence we are finding the input characteristics of this configuration so to obtain the input resistance to obtain the input resistance of any configuration first we have to take the input characteristics next i'll move to the next slide this is the output characteristics of your common base configuration so this is all the same like 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 your input characteristics but here 
the difference is the curve is drawn between the output voltage to the output current with the fixed values of input current. So let me start with the IE. Input current is R in common basis IE. Output voltage is VCD. Output current is IC. So with the fixed values of IE, so if I going on increasing VCD collector to collector junction to base junction voltage or the output junction voltage, will that IC is increasing or not? That we are going to check that. Here. Now just look it out for IE 0 milliamps, for IE 1 milliamp, 2 milliamp, 3 milliamp, and 4 milliamp are collector current approximately equal to I. So if I am going to increase the VCB, base width region will reduce and the base width when it is reduced, the amount of charge carriers will be very less. Hence, the emitter current is approximately equal to IC. Hence, so here it doesn't depend on your VCB. So we have a way uh, we, we have a uh, parallel lines which is with respect to your x axis or VCB. So it doesn't depend on VCB and IE is approximately equal to IC. Next. For a constant values of IE, IC is, for a constant value of IE, IC is independent of your collector to base voltage. And these are parallel to the axis of VCB as the emitter to base junction is forward bias. So when I increase the amount of emitter current, how can I increase the amount of emitter current? By increasing the base to emitter junction voltage. If I increase that base to emitter junction voltage, then the amount of emitter current is increasing. When the amount of emitter current is increasing, so now here the collector current is also equal to the emitter current. If your IE is 1 milliamp, IC is also 1. IE is 2 milliamp, IC is also 2. IC, IE is 3, then IC is 3. So it doesn't, the increase in the collector current doesn't depend on your collector to base junction voltage on output junction. So now from this, let me find the output resistance. Why we need to calculate this output characteristics? In order to obtain the output resistance or not, we have to take this output characteristics. So now let I take this change in VCB with respect to change in IC or this is your dynamic resistance of your output resistance. It is a static resistance. It's a simple ratio of at any point you can take the voltage with respect to the collector current IC can give the output resistance. So now I require this is in the range of milliamps. So approximately I'll get my output resistance is in kilo ohms. But I said for an ideal amplifier I require or not is very very less. Almost ideal case I require I or not is equal to zero. For an amplifier Ideal characteristics input resistance must be infinite. So common base is having a resistance of, of common base this is a common base uh, amplifier is our calling that. R plus point six of your amplitude since it's infinite, output resistance with is zero. As a an amplifier, no, we can't prefer this since 
R naught is high. R naught is high, but for some applications like, uh, but input resistance is high, right? So to avoid your uh, loading effects, we can connect as an intermediate stage. We can use your common base configuration as an intermediate stage of stage of your cascade stages of your amplifiers. Due to this, input resistance is at low ohms. Okay, so this is about your common base configuration characteristics, input and output characteristics. Now, let me move to our next slide. Next slide. So this is in in common base configuration. The DC mode gain or the current gain is the ratio of collector current to the emitter current. As I already we discussed that IC is equal to IC is if I neglect your uh, IB then IC is equal approximately equal to IE. Alpha is in the range of uh, 0 0.95 to 0 0.99 almost approximately equal to 1. But here collected total amount of collector current is equal to alpha times of IE plus of ICBO. So what is an ICBO? It's a leakage current due to the emitter, term, uh, emitter terminal open. In a common base, if it is base terminal is open circuited because we took your base as a common terminal in common base configuration, base must be open circuited and there is no amount of current from your input junction. No carriers will diffuse into the input junction and there is no recombination of your recombinations which take place in your base. Hence here, only the output uh, junction is reverse bias. When the output junction collected to base junction is reverse bias. So we have uh, in that uh, depletion layer, we have the, uh, there is a flow of uh, minority charge carriers from base to collector we would have. So those uh, carrier movement from base to collector can yield the reverse saturation current or the leakage current which is denoted as ICBO. Okay. If I neglect this ICBO then alpha is equal to IC by I. If it is AC current again then change in IC divided by change in IE. Next. Next we will move to your common emitter configuration. Everybody, is it clear? Is it clear, everybody? We have completed your common base configuration. Is it clear? Do you have any doubts in common base? Do you have any doubts? If it doesn't have, then I'll move to your next configuration, which is common emitter. Yeah. See the previous slide. This one you wanted. Total amount of collector current is alpha IE plus ICBO. What is ICBO? Leakage current. When your when the base is at open circuited, so when the base is open circuited, there is no amount of carriers can diffuse into the base. But we have connected a reverse bias voltage between collector to base junction. So due to the minority charge carrier movement from base to collector can give the leakage current. Hence, it is a total amount of ideally. The total amount of current is the summation of alpha IE plus the leakage current. If we neglect the leakage current, then IC is approximately equal to alpha IE. Okay. So as IC and IE are equal, in the output characteristics, we have shown that, right? If it is 0 milliamp, then we have 0 milliamp. If it is 2 milliamp, then we have 2 milliamps. 4, 4 we have. Right? Now, so it is in the range of 0 0.95 to 0 0.99, the typical values of current gain of 
common base or a beta sorry alpha next common emitter configuration in common emitter configuration i am taking emitter as a common terminal my base is the input terminal my collector is the output terminal so in a transistor of npn i took here emitter as common terminal hence it is connected to the ground and my base is the input terminal my collector is the output terminal right to obtain the base current and collector current we have connected your ammeters to obtain your voltages between base to emitter junction we have connected a uh, voltmeters initiated with that terminals right now these are the polarities which we have connected now basis of here base, we we not to obtain the forward bias basis of p type hence from the vbb source this is the vbb source we have to apply positive terminal through your resistor to the positive terminal in series we have to connect your ammeter hence this positive terminal of vbb is connected to the positive terminal of your emitter whereas negative is connected to this okay next whereas here to obtain your or uh, to apply your base to collector uh, collector junction reverse bias we have uh, collector is of n type hence we have to connect vcc positive terminal supply voltage vcc positive terminal through the collector resistor or a port to the ammeter so this voltage source is connected in series with this ammeter hence this is a positive terminal and here positive terminal of ammeter is connected and in shunt we have to connect here voltmeter hence we connected this positive terminal of uh, voltmeter to the ammeter positive terminal whereas negative is connect connected to the ground here also positive terminal is connected to the positive terminal of ammeter and negative terminal is connected to the ground right so emitter terminal is grounded hence it is named as a common emitter configuration or also uh, or else we will also call this as a grounded emitter configuration next base is used as input terminal whereas collector is used as a output terminal now as like our input characteristics again we have to find the characteristics of your common emitter configuration hence here to obtain the common emitter configuration we have to draw a curve between your input voltage to the input current input voltage in a common emitter configuration is vbe and input current is ib where ib is in the range of microamp vbe is in the range of so vbe is units are volts okay base to emitter voltage so volts right so if i am going on increasing with a voltage at a collector to emitter must be kept constant so hence for the different Uh, for the obtained voltages on collector to emitter will be the fixed values we have to observe the input current variation with respect to the input voltage variation so hence first we have applied we have applied with the amount of ie current uh, sorry ib current is increasing base width will be more applied voltage on collector to emitter is 1 volt or uh, output junction voltage is 1 volt that is less voltage of reverse that is very less so base width will be more depletion layer width will be reduced uh, i mean it is uh, very very less depletion layer width when it is uh, very less base width is effective base width is more charge carrier hello is it visible 
My screen is visible to you. Okay, right. So in a common base configuration, our input characteristic or our input uh, current variation is towards the left of your initial curve, whereas in common emitter, the curves are towards the right of your initial curve. So if you're going on increasing this output junction voltage, the base current will reduce. So the base width will decreases, hence the base of the amount of base current is also decrease. Next. So let me find your input resistance here. Now, our input resistance is the ratio of input voltage to input current. So, now VB is almost is approximately equal to 0.7. So, let I take that 0.7 and IB is in the range of microamps. So, my resistance approximately is in the range of mega ohms. So, input resistance of common emitter configuration because my IB is in micro amps, hence my input resistance is in the range of mega ohms. So, I have obtained one ideal characteristics of amplifier yes so input resistance when it is high it is suitable for an amplifier and then we'll move to your output resistance also for output resistance to find your output resistance we have to obtain the output characteristics now these are the output characteristics of your this image shows your output characteristics of common emitter configuration and it is the curve drawn between your output voltage to the output current or output voltage with a fixed input currents. So, VC is the output voltage, IC is the output current and our input current is base current IB. So, when I gradually increasing my VC, let me find the, or let me observe so, do, do we have a variation in the IC or not? Well, it uh, actually depends on a VCE or not. No, it doesn't depend on VCE variation. It depends on the, it depends on, now, it depends on your emitter current. Emitter current. So, now, our, here, when VCE or uh, collector to base junction is increasing, so base width reduces, so IC is progressively increasing with a factor of beta. Hence, in common base configuration, the current gain is 1 or approximately equal to unity, whereas in common emitter configuration, the current gain beta DC is equal to IC by IB. IC by IB. So almost it, we have around 40 to 500 or 400. So your amount of collector current is equal to beta times of IB. It is almost, it is 200 times, uh, 500 times of IB. 500 times of IB. Hence, we doesn't have that parallel line, whereas here, progress, we have we indicated that in active region, progressively it is increasing. Okay? Now, so, 
so these are the output characteristics of your common emitter configuration and uh, to obtain these regions these regions are classified based on the input and output junction biasing so now when ib is zero so the curves between uh, sorry the space which is below the ib zero is denoted with the cutoff region whereas this region is known as saturation region and where the collector current is increasing progressively that region is called as active region now so these are simple observations about your output character um, regions so base to emitter junction is forward bias in active region base to collector junction is reverse bias whereas in saturation input junction and output junctions both are forward bias and we can obtain a big difference in between your ib and your ic next the cutoff region is obtained below your ib equal to 0 microamps because since our two junctions are at reverse bias so amount of flow of current is zero and it is termed as a cutoff region so it can be applied as a voltage amplifier or current amplifier or power amplification purposes we can use the common emitter configuration which is in active region so here in saturation the values of collector to emitter is very small and it is suitable for and the transistor is utilized as a logical switch so on switch as an on switch we can use this and in saturation uh, if we are operating your transistor under saturation and cutoff you can you can also construct a digital gate which is called as an inverter or a not gate next ib and ib is zero ic is not zero since uh, you have your emitter terminal open when emitter terminal is opened then uh, a small amount of leakage current is flowing through your your uh, base junction since your output junction is and output junction and uh, input junction are reverse by so that amount of current is approximately equal to ice which is in the range of uh, nano amps or uh, micro amps so next so beta is 30 to 400 already we have discussed this beta dc if we are finding your dc current apply the dc voltages as input and output junction if i wanted to find your ac beta amplification factor or your current again ac current again then i have to apply the ac signal sources at input so simply we will replace this uh, actually we here we have applied vbb right so instead of that we have to apply a ac signal source then we could find your ac beta so beta dc is also termed as hfe h is derived from your hybrid uh, hybrid circuit two port network so hybrid parameter it's a forward current gain hfe is hybrid one of the hybrid parameter which is a forward current gain right now relation between alpha and beta so this uh, alpha is the uh, ie is equal to ic plus ib now if i neglect if you are, if i am substituting your uh, ie is approximately equal uh, equal to ic if i neglect your ib now if i replace this ic with the beta ib then our ie current is equal to i am replacing my ic with the beta ib because my current again beta is equal to ic divided by ib ic is equal to beta ib if i replace this ic with the beta ib then i have emitter current is equal to beta plus 1 into of ib next as we know that alpha dc what is alpha alpha is the current gain in common base configuration which is ic by i common emitter configuration current gain is ic by ib so ie is equal to from this ie is equal to ic by alpha whereas here ib is equal to ic by ib and now these two you have to replace in this equation one 
equation number 2 and equation number 3 where equation number 2 is emitter current in terms of IC and alpha and equation 3 gives the base current in terms of IC and beta. So in the above equation we have IE and IB. So in the first equation replace IE with IC by IC by alpha is equal to now is equal to 1 plus beta times of IB and replace your IB with IC by beta. So then we can obtain the relation between IC IC cancelled. So it is cancelled. So alpha is equal to beta divided by beta plus 1. So if I wanted to find in terms of beta then here alpha into alpha beta plus alpha, uh, alpha we have whereas here it is equal to beta alpha b plus alpha is equal to beta now if I wanted to find a beta in terms of alpha then beta terms I have to take beta if I am taking common then it is equal to 1 minus alpha beta times of 1 minus beta into 1 minus alpha which is equal to alpha where beta is equal to from this beta is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. So these are the relations between your current gain of common base and current gain of your common emitter. Next common collector configuration as like your uh, the two configuration I took your collector as common my input uh, terminal must be uh, input uh, terminal is base output terminal is your uh, out, uh, emitter and common terminal is your collector my input current here it is IB output current uh, here it is IE and input voltage is base to collector and output voltage is emitter to collector. So it is also called as emitter follower because we can also we are taking the output at a emitter terminal. So collector is following the emitter. So based on the applied voltage at a base to emitter junction only the amount of charge carriers will diffuse into the collector terminal. So your collector is following the emitter hence it is also named as your emitter follower. We can also take the voltage in uh, emitter follower we will take the output voltage at your sorry output uh, current at uh, emitter terminal. Now base is used as the input terminal and these are the characteristics input characteristics of your common collector configuration. So input voltage is collected to base and input current is IB with a fixed voltages output voltage VCE. VCE with the two volts, VCE with four volts. So the IB current is reduced if we increase the VCB. There is a fall in the base current if we increase the base to collector voltage. There is a fall in the base current if we increase the collector to base junction voltage. More positive voltage will yield the fall in the base current with a fixed values of the, uh, with the fixed values of your collector to emitter voltage. Next, output characteristics of common collector configuration on x-axis we have taken the output characteristics are drawn in between the output voltage to the output current output voltage is VCE output current is IE with a fixed input current IB. So for the different input currents so we have mentioned the or we have we have taken the or we observed your uh, uh, output current variation IB for 60 microamps 
what is the amount of current so here we have ie is in the range of milliamps whereas ib are in the range of of micro amps next the current gain of common collector is change in ie with respect to the change in ib because here output current is inter current and input current is ib so ratio of output to output current to input current means here current gain in common collector is gamma so gamma is equal to change in ie with respect to the change in ib and here as we know that alpha is change in ie divided by change in ib ie is equal to ic plus ib so ib is equal to change in ie minus of ic now let i replace my ib with change in ie minus ic then divide this equation numerator and denominator with ie we have in the numerator with 1 plus in the denominator we have 1 minus of because these two are cancel the ie change in ie change in ie can cancel and minus of change in ic with respect to the change in ie gives you what is the ratio of change in ic divided by change in ie so ic by ie is equal to common base configuration amplification factor j is alpha so this is the d relation between gamma and alpha gamma is always equal to 1 by 1 minus alpha right so this circuit is mainly used for the amplification because of this input resistance is high since in why it is input resistance is high means so vce is a your in input resistance so we have we have taking the ratio of vcb with respect to the ib i again here ib is in the range of micro amps so when ib is in the range of micro amps our resistance of input resistance is in mega ohm like your common emitter configuration so input input resistance is very high so we can prefer this for imp as an impedance matching devices so if the input current is ib is zero so then the collector current also becomes uh, zero here in output uh, output characteristics so ib is gradually we are fixing with a uh, 10 microamps then ie is increased so voltage gain voltage gain is uh, very very low what is the voltage gain is output voltage to the input voltage in common collector configuration our output voltage is vce divided by vcb collector to emitter junction voltage is collector to emitter junction voltage as we know that uh, our collector to emitter junction voltage is equal to vcb plus vde so almost it is in near to unity if i neglect your vbe value so which is equal to or approximately equal to collector to emitter is vcb hence the low voltage gain is obtained in your collect common collector configuration and this is for utilized for mainly used for the impedance matching since the, its input resistance is very high and these are your some of your uh, compare the comparison between your all the configurations so as i said you that um, so your amplifier is categorized or it's a best amplifier or a good amplifier or a bad amplifier depends on its uh, 
characteristics of input impedance output impedance voltage gain current gain power gain as well as its phase shift in common base your input impedance is low in common emitter it is in the medium range in common collector it is high so output impedance is in common base is very high common emitter high and a common collector is low so phase shift in between input and output if i apply an ac signal as an input in common base we doesn't have any phase shift in common base zero degrees whereas in common emitter you have a 180 degrees out of phase so 180 degrees phase shift we have is for a positive cycle of input you will get negative cycle for a negative cycle of input you will get a positive cycle of output if i am applying an ac signal as an input in a common emitter like your common collector so like uh, sorry in common collector like your common base you also have a zero degrees phase shift voltage gain is high in common base low in common collector whereas it is medium in common emitter current gain is low in common base high in common collector whereas it is medium in your common emitter and the power gain is low power gain is very high in common emitter and in common collector med, uh, it is in the range of medium why the power gain is uh, very high means the amount of output current is uh, equal is ic is equal to beta times of ib hence a heavy amount of current is flowing in your common emitter so power gain is uh, this is a ratio of output power uh, to input power output power is ic square into of rl so ic is ic is very high so it is which is amplified 200 time, uh, 400 times of your ib hence it is very high uh, than your all uh, the rest of the two configurations hence as a, a generalized amplifier we would prefer the common emitter configuration so this is about it today session now let me wind up this session today and uh, you can start your quiz Start writing your quiz.